tensions slipped from her lips, and Lee turned her head to feel it against her cheek. She laughed, low. A face full of dick was so ridiculous and porny, yet she knew it had to be turning him on to see it. Beautiful, came his whisper, and there was so much reverence in his voice she wanted to weep. She lost track of time and floated on the sensations. A kiss to her collarbone, a stroke of something soft along the inside of her thigh, the press of his fingers inside her and withdrawn, the scent of her arousal as he drew them across her lips. Desire rose inside her. This, too, was beauty. It wasn't like anything had ever been. It was everything she'd once imagined she'd wanted, only now made real. Giving up to him this way was a gift Brandon had given her, and, like a gift, she felt herself being opened, revealed, unwrapped. By the time he tugged loose the belt and lifted her from the chair to carry her to the bed, Lee was riding wave after wave of pleasure. When he pulled off the blindfold, she nearly came from the sight of his face, taut with desire. They made love without bells and whistles. No fireworks shooting from their asses as they hung upside down from the chandelier and sang Yankee Doodle Dandy. Him on top, her underneath, and holding on to him with her arms and legs as he buried his face in the curve of her neck. Her orgasm stole over her, quicksilver fast and fleeting, followed moments later by a deeper, slower flurry of tremors. Her nails dug into his back as she hooked her heels around the backs of his calves and urged him into her. Harder. Deeper. Faster. Maybe there was a lot to say about this. Or maybe neither of them needed words to describe it. At any rate, Lee drifted as sweetly into sleep as Brandon had led her into orgasm. Let's get out of here. Brandon had been dozing when she said it. Huh? Lee rolled toward him. This place. It was a great idea, honey, and I don't want you to think it wasn't. But this isn't Christmas. Let's go to your parents' house. He looked at her. You're kidding, right? Nope. He frowned and sat up. You mean it? She sat too. I want there to be a tree and presents and gingerbread houses and eggnog. I want to be woken up at six in the morning by the kids who can't wait to see what Santa brought. He was silent for a moment. You don't just mean this year, right? She shook her head. No, I mean always. I mean us, a family, sooner rather than later. Are you sure? I thought maybe you'd want it to be just... Us. She smiled. I know how disappointed you'll be to have to give up random dick sucking in the kitchen, but I think the benefits will outweigh the disadvantages. Don't you? Unexpectedly, the thought lifted something inside him, and he kissed her. Damn. I love it when you get all tech-speak with me. Hmm. But I mean it. Let's check out. Change our flight. Let's have Christmas in Iowa this year. And who knows? Maybe next year we'll get to have the tiny stocking. This revelation on top of her agreeing to let him tie her up sort of floored him. And he wasn't sure what to say. Um, okay. Lee rolled on top of him, straddling him and pinning his hands over his head. Don't worry, fuck machine. I will still sell you every chance I get. He could have bumped his hips and nudged her off him, but that wasn't the point. Promise? Absolutely. And sometimes I'll even let you tie me up. Really? Brandon felt the grin spread across his mouth. Promise that too? Yep. His wife let go of his wrists and sat up, looking so beautiful it made his heart hurt. Things change all the time, baby, but that doesn't mean this has to. Or that we will. I guess we'll find out, huh? Lee smiled and leaned to kiss him again. Yes, we will. Gingerbread houses. 
eggnog liberally spiked with liquor. Fire burning in the fireplace, and a room full of rowdy, overexcited children tearing through wrapping paper and gift bags. This was Christmas, Lee thought, curled against Brandon's side on his brother Brent's couch. She had a belly stuffed with turkey and stuffing, a mug of Irish coffee in one hand, and her husband by her side. Nothing could be better. Sure, the mattress in his childhood bedroom was lumpy, and they couldn't exactly make wild monkey love all day and night the way they'd been doing on vacation. Sure, the kids were out of control, but his mom had cried and clung to them when they showed up on her doorstep, making Lee feel more welcomed and at home than she had for most of her life. Her ankle had even started feeling better. Brandon, in the midst of conversation with his brother, kissed her temple absently. No big deal, not even really paying attention. Yet that tiny, simple gesture moved her, as much as if he jumped up in front of everyone and shouted out how much he loved her. She looked at the fireplace mantle, which held the so-called tiny stocking, and would until someone else had a baby. Maybe next year the tiny stocking would be theirs. Maybe not. Still laughing at something his brother had said, Brandon eased her cooled mug from her fingers and stood. I'll get you some more. When he disappeared into the kitchen, she discreetly thumbed a text message into her phone. When he returned, as he bent to kiss her and press a fresh mug of coffee into her hand, Brandon whispered into her ear, Just as soon as we get back to my folks. They laughed together at the silly task she'd set for him and which he'd take such pleasure in performing. Their own private joke that nobody else had to know. And later they laughed again trying not to make the bed squeak as Brandon did everything Lee had requested of him. This was beauty, she thought as she drifted off to sleep with his warmth beside her. This was love. And that didn't ever have to change. Believe. Written by Lauren Dane. And read by Madison Vaughn. Chapter One. Two weeks. He'd been gone while attending a training in Dallas for two whole weeks, and it had sucked. Being without him wasn't something she was used to or that she liked in any way. But to pass the time and to give him a Christmas present she knew he'd love, Rory had gone to a tattoo parlor with her friend Ryan and had her right shoulder done. Nothing too big or brash. A pretty, stylized melding of her initials and his, wrapped around an infinity symbol. She wanted to mark her commitment to him in a tangible way. He was due back tomorrow, and she could hardly wait. She missed him in a way she couldn't have understood without him being gone, realized how much he did for her, the place he filled in her life and in her heart. In the time they'd lived together, before they were a couple, and then in the months after, he'd become essential to her. He looked at her and made her feel like the most beautiful woman alive— as if by some sort of magic, he knew just what she needed and when she needed it. He was her other half. He made her laugh, didn't hog the covers, hefted the heavy stuff, and didn't balk if she asked him to pick up tampons at the grocery store. He saw straight to her heart, and he loved her anyway. Having that connection with him was the finest thing in her life, and something she figured she'd never be lucky enough to feel once Zack, her former husband, had been murdered nearly two years before. But she had him. He had her, and she was indeed blessed. Again, she thought this was the case when she came around the corner on the last block to their house and saw him on the porch. Laughing, she double-timed it, jogging toward him and pausing just a moment at the front walk to take a long look at what was hers. She took a good look from the tips of his scuffed cowboy boots, up the long legs covered in pale worn denim, the bulge at his lap, the narrow waist with the tucked-in shirt and belt buckle. She caught her breath as her pulse galloped. She loved every tall, lean, muscled inch of his body. Her gaze moved again, up the chest she nibbled her way down as often as she could, the wide shoulders and work-strong arms, and up into a face she'd dreamed of for years and years, never imagining she'd wake up to it every morning, falling into his gaze. He leaned back against the porch, stretching out and preening just a little for her. 
The smile on his lips brought her nipples to attention. Jude Callahan in all his glory. The road that had brought them together, that had built this relationship she gave thanks for every single day, had been a hard one, filled with pain and loss. And yet there he was on their porch, with eyes only for her, with a smile that spoke of delicious secrets only she knew. Now look what I got here. Come on up here, sugar, let me taste those lips. As if she had anything else she'd rather do just then. She moved to him, up the steps and into his arms, and came home. His mouth on hers, as always, settled in for a taste, exactly how he wanted. She sighed, opening up to him, melting against him, glorying in his flavor, in the way his arms held her to his body. The heat of him forced the chill of the cold December day from her bones. When she shivered, it was for an entirely different reason than the cold. Now then. He set her away from him, his eyes going half-lidded when she licked her lips to get that last bit of him she could for the moment. I feel lots better. Good. My work is done then. Because she could, she took another tour from his toes to his gorgeous face. You're home a whole day early. What are you doing out here? It's cold. Did you lose your keys? Not that I mind. It sure made that last half block easier to see you waiting up here for me looking all handsome and stuff. I had the chance to catch an earlier flight, so I grabbed it. The last day wasn't anything I hadn't done before, so I got out of there and back here to you. Glad I did. He hugged her again, and she snuggled back into his body. Yay! She kept hold, not wanting to let go just yet of how good he felt. Just got home about three minutes ago. I saw you cross the street over at Alder and decided to wait. You jiggle pretty lack when you jog up the steps. Pervert. She swished past him and into the house, reaching out to take his hand as she passed. That thread of their connection shimmered and solidified. That space he took up inside her warmed and settled in. This shouldn't be news to you. Once the door was closed and locked, he pulled the window shades closed before turning back her way. Now then, you're here and I'm here and we don't even have to webcam. Though I will say I find having you naked and fingering your pussy on camera for me while I'm away sure does make the time apart a little easier to bear. She sighed happily, taking the coat he had in his hands and moving to the closet to hang it up for him. Good. I felt positively wanton. Funny how he did that. Enticed her to do things that made her blush, knowing she'd get off on them once she let go. He laughed. Only for me, darling. Now, you and me, naked. Sweaty. I think some writhing might help, too. I have something for you first. She took his hand and drew him down the hall to their bedroom. I was getting to that. That's part of the naked, sweaty plan I was proposing. No, silly. Your Christmas present. The big one, anyway. Christmas is three weeks away. You're so impatient. He grinned. Not that I'm complaining or anything. She moved to their dresser, pausing before the mirror. Meeting his gaze in its reflection, she paused a beat until his attention was focused on her so intently she shivered as if she could feel it like a phantom caress. Well, as it happens, your being gone was good for my plans. Facing him, she reached down to pull her sweater up and over her head and then shimmied from her bra. Lacking this so far. She turned, bowing her head, waiting for him to see the tat. Holy shit! In the space of a breath, he was on her, standing so near the heat of him blanketed her bare back. He leaned close, his breath against her skin, as he brushed the hair away from her shoulder, exposing the tattoo to his view. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Do you like it? It was important, she knew that right then, that he did. Rory, this is... No one but you has ever touched me like this. Gentle fingertips traced over the ink, replaced by his lips. It's beautiful. I want one, too, just like yours, in the same place. 
She smiled, her hair covering her face. I'd like that. And now you have to help me with my problem. You created this. You need to fix it. She turned, knowing what his next words would be did not blunt their effect when he spoke. On your knees. Suck my cock just the way I like it. She knelt quickly, her hands moving to his belt and the zip and button of his jeans. Just how she liked it, too. His clothes still on as she knelt there in his gaze, totally naked. It amped up the power between them, crackling against her skin as she leaned in and brushed her cheek over the line of his cock before turning her head to kiss the ridge where he was most sensitive. Time seemed to slow, draw out with honeyed sensuality as it often did when she found herself on her knees for him. His cock, standing fierce and hard, drew her attention, and she went back for another long lick and some more kisses before she took him at the root, angled him just so, and took a deep breath. Bit by bit, she took him deep, keeping him wet the way he liked it best. His fingers sifted through her hair and then tightened, sending a shiver through her, hardening her nipples, where the rings he'd given her swayed, sending a pulse of desire through her pussy. Her groan around him only made him harder against her tongue. I love it when you do that, he murmured. When you groan, half pain, half desire, and then you keep sucking my cock. When you give yourself to me, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. He wasn't a man prone to empty flattery, not by this time in their relationship. Shallow, flirty Jude had gone, grown into a man whose word meant everything. So when soft words, especially those laced with darkness, flowed from him, it got to her. Wait. He said it, but he didn't sound very sure about it. She paused for a moment, letting him decide. He put a hand on her shoulder, and she pulled back with a slight pop. The way he stalked over to the chest at the foot of their bed made her tremble just a bit, knowing what he had in store for her. You're too pretty not to be bound right now. He turned toward her, the wrist cuffs dangling from his fingertips. Swallowing did little to help her suddenly dry mouth. And then he brought out the blindfold, and she blinked several times, not bothering to hold back her smile. He knew what got to her. He knew. He used it, pushed her buttons, her boundaries, and brought her more pleasure than she'd ever imagined. Within moments, he'd secured the blindfold, the fuzzy inner lining light, tight, and very soft against her face. Another contrast, just like the man who'd put it in place. Hands at the small of your back. Without her sight, she let her skin come alive, let her other senses come to the forefront. She didn't bother to stop her soft whimper of pleasure when he slid the loosened cuff, also lined, over first one wrist and then the other, tightening until the leather creaked just right. The metal of the hasp jingled slightly, a whisper of what was to come, and she let herself fall into it, let herself get captured by his spell. When you're done, after I've come in your mouth and you've pleased me, I'm going to stand back and look at you, look my fill at what a beautiful woman I'm blessed to have in my life. Clothing rustled as he paused. And then I'm going to use the chains and weights on your nipples. She gulped at the phantom sensation blooming through her nipples at the memory of the tug, the slight pain of the weighted beads that would then rush into unbelievable pleasure when he took them off. He chuckled. That's what I thought. Now, my cock is right in front of your mouth. Suck me off, baby. She took him deep, as deep as she could. Over and over, the movements as entrancing in their own way as the cuffs were, it created a sense of ritual without seeming rote. His taste wended through her, the feel of his cock in her mouth, the way he touched her, the sounds he made. It all combined to bind them together again after their time apart. He had a way of murmuring the sweetest things to her when she was on her knees for him, 
Even while some of them were utterly dirty and made her blush, the emotion behind them, the way the awe and love was so clear in his voice, made them beautiful instead of hard or ugly. That's what love did, and it was the core of why she loved being dominated by him so much, why it made her feel beautiful instead of a thing. He took the reins, but never her control, never her personhood. She gave him her control, gave him the power to lead them, but in doing so, gained her own. Whatever it was, however they described it, it was love, and it worked. Are you ready, baby? His voice was passion rough. She knew his eyes would be glossy with desire, his lips wet from the way he drew his tongue over them right before he came, knew he only looked at her as she gave him pleasure. She hummed her assent, and he thrust into her mouth one last time, filling her as he came on a snarl of her name, I love you, darling. He helped her up and led her to their bed. Kneel here for me. I want to look at you a while. Gooseflesh broke as she knew he meant to drag her pleasure out, knew that when he made her come at last, it would be spectacular and bone deep. And so she knelt on their bed, falling into that space in her head where she relaxed like a cat in a sunny window. Jude moved to his favorite chair to get his breath back as he took her in. Truly, he'd seen a lot of naked women in his time, and none of them could even approach her level of beauty. It wasn't just her outside, though, truth be told, she was a gorgeous woman. It was the way she knelt there, knowing he watched her, knowing just how much she affected him. Her submission was the most beautiful part of his life, strong like she was. Her submission did not make her weak in any way. He loved her independence and energy, and the way she gave herself to him would be meaningless if she had no choice or he bullied it from her. He thought about the mark she'd had done just for him, for them. Another step, this one so big and important it had sent him reeling. It was one thing to wear his necklace or the rings in her body— that tattoo on her shoulder, the ink in her skin, was a public declaration of their relationship. She'd had it done for him, for them, and he needed to process it all. Because she'd done it when he needed it most, and the way she saw straight to the heart of him left him exposed totally, loved, appreciated and laid wide open all for her, all for them. Chapter 2 Her hands clasped at the curve of her back. The cuffs were tight enough to remind her she was bound, but not tight enough to truly hurt. The edge of the leather poked against the tender flesh of her wrists. Each time she shifted, even just slightly, she felt the rasp there, sending waves of pleasure rolling through her senses. Her nipples throb throbbed, throbbed, as the chain with the tiny weights swayed with her breathing. She knew Jude sat in a chair nearby, watching her with hungry eyes. That knowledge caught her breath, bringing her tongue to swipe over her lips, lips swollen from his kisses, salty with the taste of him, of his cock. She had to imagine it, use her other senses in the absence of her sight and the ability to touch. Imagining it was part of the allure, knowing he was there, knowing how he watched her with greedy eyes, knowing he saw her as beautiful and desirable intensified the experience. You're so beautiful. The slow, sticky, warm drawl of his voice brought a hitch to her breath. Such a sexy sound, filled with enough awe that she believed every bit of praise he gave— made her feel like the most magnificent woman to ever live, certainly the luckiest one. He stood. She could hear the rustle and then the steps he took toward where she knelt on the bed. His scent caught her first, that all-man smell he had, warm. The heat of his body caressed her as he got close enough to lean down and press a kiss on her shoulder. I do believe I want you again. I think my cock is foolhardy to undertake such a goal, 
when I just blew down your pretty throat only ten minutes ago, but... He paused to chuckle. Where you're concerned, my cock is a little greedy. Please, she managed to say. His nearness pulled her from the soft, cushioned space she'd been in. Needing to feel his skin against hers, his cock inside her body where it was meant to be. He caressed her skin, running his hands up and down her back. She knew, pausing to look at the tattoo that had started this little interlude. She'd uncovered it, and his gaze had gone hooded when she met it in the mirror she stood before. Her knees had gone to rubber when he ordered her to them. Jude's cock jumped at the sound the cuffs made when she shifted a little. The tiny shush of metal against metal and leather. It mixed with the scent of her cunt, the heat of her skin, her shampoo, and the cinnamon of the gum she'd been chewing before she'd come home. Though this was far from the first time, each time he touched her, it was as if he fell in love with her anew. He paused to unclip one nipple and then the other, knowing sensation would rush back and bring her more pleasure. God, he loved looking at her when she was like this, eyes covered with the deep purple satin mask, breasts thrust forward, nipples hard and dark from the weights and her own arousal, hands bound at her back, on her knees, because he liked it, because it pleased him and she wanted that too. Christ, he was the most fortunate man alive that this woman had cleaved herself to him, and he'd nearly lost her forever. Driven back to near frantic need by that thought, he picked her up and carried her back to the chair he'd been sitting in. I want you, darling, on my cock. As he said it, he moved her just so, astride his lap, mesmerized by the O oh, of pleasure her lips made as he thrust up and into that welcoming heat. He paused as she tightened and fluttered around him. Nothing else could ever compare to this, to the way her cunt slid around his cock, hugging him as he fucked into her. Taking a deep breath, he kissed up her neck as he undid her wrists so she could hold on. Her hands sought his shoulders as she rose up and then moved back down his cock. Yes, just like that. Slow and deep. She'd keep the mask on because he hadn't told her otherwise. The beauty of that, the dark power of it, wrapped around them both. Her breath hitched as she began to ride him, just like he'd asked. Her nipple begged for more against his left palm, while the fingers of his other hand walked down her belly and spread her pussy open, exposing the ring there. Her clit swollen and needy. Shh, he murmured as he flicked a fingertip over it, and she whimpered. More. Her voice threaded with need. There's always more where you're concerned. He managed to stutter out as she squirmed, arching closer as he idly flicked a fingertip over her clit. She was ready, as he knew she would be. He teased her to the point where she'd explode when he gave her the right speed and intensity of pressure. Knowing she was also hypersensitive, he kept his fingers against her light and steady until her soft murmurs and entreaties had nearly driven him right over the edge again. Are you ready to come? He whispered it against her temple, pinching her nipple just so. Yes. God, yes. All right, then. Come all over my cock, Rory. He gave her a tiny bit more pressure, just what she needed to cross over and fly apart in his arms, the rush of her wet heat coating his cock as she squeezed him, her nails digging into his shoulders. At that point, he was too close to resist the allure of thrusting up into her one last time, deep and hard, unloading himself with jerk after jerk of his cock until they both sighed long and rested against the other. When he pulled the mask off, her eyelids fluttered open and their gazes locked. I love you, Jude. He smiled, his heart swelling to the point of bursting. I love you too, Rory. Shifting her a bit, he dipped to kiss the tip of her nose. I guess since you just gave me your Christmas present, I should give you mine. He preferred to surprise her closer to the date, 
but because of what the present was, he knew she'd need the time to plan around it. Is it in your pants? You're trouble, you know that. He kissed her again and lost himself in her, the way he had every time he touched her. His hands fisted in her hair, tugging her closer, and she made a soft sound. Now then, I think I can live another hour or so without having you again. Alert at the prospect of presence, she sat up and scrambled off his lap. I thought you said it was three weeks away. Not that I'm complaining, she amended quickly. Laughing, he got up and tugged her toward their bathroom. Shower and then present. He kept an eye on her and the many mirrors as he turned the taps on. The pipes were old and it was December, so it took a while to get the water hot enough for a shower. She leaned back into his body as he massaged the shampoo into her scalp. She loved the way he was with her, gentle like this, sweet and giving. He took care of her in ways that made her life easy, made sure she never had to do anything unpleasant. Well, he couldn't make her mother go away, but other than that part, he made her feel like a cosseted princess. Should I even ask you what that smile is about? He moved so she could rinse her hair and took liberties with her soap-slick nipples in the meantime. Just thinking about how lucky I am to have a man like you to love me. You always say the very right thing at the perfect time. He soaped her body up far more than was necessary, but she had no plans to complain. He made her forget her own name sometimes with the way he touched her. Sometime later, ensconced on the couch in front of a roaring fire in the fireplace and the tea she'd made steeping in the pot, she sighed happily as he leaned back into her fingers where she massaged his shoulders. You're so good to me, he murmured. <laughs> No more than you deserve. Now, about my present? He laughed, settling back into her so she could wrap her arms around him and hold him tight. I know we both normally spend Christmas at Kelly and Max's house. Kelly was Rory's sister, and she was married to Max, Jude's brother. They'd all grown up together and spent the holidays as a family since Rory had returned to Oakley some years before. This will be our first Christmas as a couple. He paused, and she kissed the top of his head. So, I thought we could, you know, get away for a few days, make our own holiday celebration. She smiled, but he couldn't see it, so she kissed him again. Really? There's a place in Highlands, in North Carolina, a few hours' drive from here. It overlooks the valley. High enough to get snow sometimes, the owner said. Our own cabin at the resort private and secluded. Restaurant looks good, but they have room service, too, if we want it. She scrambled around him to wrap herself around his waist, wanting him to see how much she loved this present. Just you and me for Christmas, really? He nodded. Is that all right? Four nights. We'd be back for the New Year's Eve party your sister is planning. I know we spent it with family and all, but I thought it would be nice to get away. Just the two of them. They needed it, she knew. She sure as heck wanted it, wanted to make their own traditions without the shadow of Zack between them. Silly, we will be with family. You and I are a family, aren't we? I love the idea. It's fabulous, and I can't wait to have you all to myself. He smiled. I've arranged coverage at work. No calls in the middle of the night. The cabin we're in is secluded, so you can make all the noise you want, and we won't have our nephews at the front door first thing in the morning begging for breakfast or to go hiking or what have you. I can have my wicked way with you over and over. Lots of wicked ways. I heartily endorse this plan, Jude. Thank you. It would be good to leave Oakley behind for a few days, and she loved the idea of not having to share him with anyone else.